Hey everyone, this is Michael Manna and welcome to the T4 Show. In today's video, we're going to bring you another smartwatch or wearable showdown. This one's for August 2014, and I guess at this point, we're going to be doing this just about every month as, as long as we have all these wearables and keep expanding them. I think it's a, it's a great comparison, and in this video, we're going to go back to the first wearable I purchased and uh, tell you how it's doing. So kind of a long update uh, T4 show review on that particular wearable. So we're going to start left to right here. On the left, we have something that's pretty dedicated as a smartwatch. This is the Adidas uh, smartwatch for running and uh, also I've been using it for yoga mainly and even Kempo X uh, for P90X. I think the battery might be dead. That's one point I'm going to bring up in a second. Uh, but this is a heart rate monitor. It doesn't require a chest strap. And if you saw my Mio Alpha review, uh, that's a pretty difficult thing to do without the chest strap. It's pretty inaccurate or you have to put it so tight on your wrist that it cuts off your circulation at the same time. Uh, this one, this particular one that my buddy Dave, who's a friend from Twitter and he follows T4 show. There we go. It's on now. Okay, batteries of 15%, and then that's one thing I'll get to in a second. Uh, all right, so on this one, it's pretty easy. You get the button down here, you hit the button, and what I do is just I do a free workout, and you can see you also have music because it does have four gigabytes of storage, so you can put your music for running or whatever you want to do uh, to play that. And you have a bunch of stuff here from marathon mode, which is beta. There's a GPS attached to it, which will obviously eat up the battery even more. And now it's shutting down. Now, I have to constantly keep this uh, plugged in. For some reason, the standby mode or shutting it off uh, has never worked correctly for me. Uh, but getting back to the heart rate monitor, this has worked more accurately than any other one that I've had that didn't require a chest strap. So it's not too bad there. It's pretty comfortable. I don't have to have it too tight on my wrist, especially if I'm doing yoga or Kempo X. It, it pretty, uh, it's pretty good at that. Uh, the one negative besides the fact I talked about with the battery life is the fact that it's about $400, which is really, really expensive. Uh, that's why I appreciate when my buddy Dave uh, sent this for me to review, and I've been using it pretty consistently. It's just that I have to keep it charged in the cradle. There's a proprietary cradle that goes here, lines up with the pins, and then you can use any micro USB cable uh, to charge it. So you have to charge it pretty much for me almost every day after using it so uh, that's the only thing that I don't really like about it and along with the price $400 you have to be a hardcore runner or somebody that really uses a heart rate monitor uh, really really often to make it worth your money so that one over there now we have we're gonna go back to the Martian Victory smartwatch which is still one of my top uh, smartwatches to wear especially if uh, I'm driving or something and want to use the speakerphone and, and don't have my Bluetooth headset on me it does have a microphone and speaker right here nope, sorry right here and also over to the side right here sorry about that I had the wrong side uh, micro USB as well but you have to have certain ones do not fit in because it's a little bit recessed back there. This one's really strong. I really like this one. Reminds me, like I said in the initial review of the Invicta watches that I like so much. Haven't changed the watch strap out yet, but I plan to do that eventually and really give it all a um, a metal feel to it. So I'll get a silver one probably that matches up with it. Really nice watch. Uh, just under $300 still, price point a little bit high, especially with some of the wearables uh, that we have out today, especially uh, the, the other model that we're going to get to next with this. So it's definitely like it. I, I like uh, being able to use Siri and Google now, but with the press of a button and also answer calls and be able to speak on the watch. And if you're a Dick Tracy fan or Inspector Gadget fan, that's a, that's a pretty cool feature to have. So that's the Martian Victory smartwatch. Now let's go over to another Martian watch that I just recently got. This is the Martian Notifier. It's basically the same uh, technology with the OLED screen and everything that the, the Victory has with the Passport or whatever model in the Martian smartwatch family, uh, but there's no microphone or speaker. So when you initiate Google Mail or Siri, you need to have your phone by you so that speaker can pick it up, but you can still initiate voice activation that way, but you have to have the device near you uh, to, to go do your search or call or text or do anything like that. Uh, this one is a very beautiful smartwatch. Comes in a variety of mixed colors, like a, a black and red, a black and white, 
Uh, it's really nice. Here we have the micro USB. This is really recessed. You, they give you a special extra long micro USB port to plug into this. So make sure you don't lose that. Uh, by far, the I, what I feel like is the most uh, standard smartwatch look. Very classic. Very nice. Really do like wearing this watch a lot as well. Uh, maybe not with soccer shorts and a t-shirt or a tank top, but it, if you're dressing up or anything like that or going into the office, this is also a great watch to wear outside of the victory. So now we're going to go into a wearable that's strictly for activity and also sleep. This is the Misfit Shine. Uh, this particular one works well for what it does. Uh, whenever I use this uh, moving around uh, or even strapping, there's a little hook thing that goes here, and then you can attach it to your shoelace. So if I'm using the bike or the elliptical, it does measure activity that way pretty well, steps pretty accurately. Sleep tracking, I have to say, out of anything I've tried, uh, it's pretty darn good. It's not outside of the dedicated sleep trackers that they have, especially the newer one from Misfit. Uh, this one works really well, and it measures not only just when you lay down and went to sleep, but also deep sleep, stuff like that, really a little bit more detailed than the average uh, tracker for sleep. So, And this one comes in, it was 129 I think it's around 99 bucks now, so not too bad if you're looking at something unique. Also has different bands you can use. You can get a, uh, I think you can get kind of like a leathery brown and stuff like that and different stuff. You can, you can also get a necklace for this so you don't have to wear it around your wrist so you can have room for one of these things. So that's pretty good. I think around 100 bucks is what you can get this for right now. So put that to the side. Put all this to the side for a second. Now we have the Galaxy Gear. This is the first one with the uh, the really nice camera right there that's uh, <laughs> have to kind of angle it to take a picture now this had a software update quite a while ago and this made it a little bit easier and a little bit more like the gear fit and the the current line of galaxy gear to uh smart watches so it's pretty good the battery life's a little bit better that's turned off there we don't have this connected to anything right now because i have my gear fit connected to the s5 once again, with this one, you're very limited. This is much of what I say a Rev-A device. Uh, you can't switch out the watch bands like you can for most of the other wearables, like the Notifier, the Victory, the Gear Fit, and also the one on the right, the Pebble. But still very good with the software update. You can take calls on this. There is a speakerphone on the mic right there, so that's really useful. Uh, not even really splash proof, so you want to keep it keep it away from the water. Uh, the Victory and the Martian Notifier are also not waterproof. Forgot to mention that. But this one here, uh, if you've owned it, I think you can still get a little more life out of it. And uh, it's not a bad buy right now. I think they have it for around maybe around 130 150 depending upon where you get it. And then not really all that bad. Battery life used to be an issue with just a day, maybe less. Now it's around two to three days that I get out of this. So not too bad at all. Proprietary, proprietary got to say it, proprietary. There we go. Connector uh, right here. This is the old style where the case goes around the entire uh, device and then micro USB charges it. So... Here we have probably one I've talked about a lot and one I've talked about how much I like the looks of it uh, because out of the dedicated smartwatches or wearables, this thing, this gear fit, uh, and also the price point, even especially was that this was pretty cheap for a while. It was on sale at Best Buy, I think for uh, around 100 bucks for a little bit, but now it's back up to about 150 This one is beautiful. The, old, the, the Super AMOLED screen it has is beautiful and... I'm trying to, to, there we go, I'm trying to do that from around the back of the camera. This is beautiful. This watch is comfortable. It's light. I don't know it's on half the time. I like the way it just forms around my wrist perfectly. And even how the, uh, the strap, you would think that this does not hold in once you attach it to your wrist, but it's held up. It's never fallen off. And this thing is incredible. If you are a Samsung smart phone user that's compatible with the gear fit i think this is the one to get out of all of them the you know the, maybe if you're a fan of android wear with the gear live or the uh, lg watch you might want to go there but this one for looks aesthetics it's waterproof uh ip67 certified and also you can change out the watch bands to any color you want 
I really think this is the sleeper hit of the year as far as wearables. Uh, the gear fit is really nice. And, uh, you know, probably about 50% of the time when I reach for a wearable to use during the day, especially testing out the S5, I go with this one. I really think it's nice. So, all right, last but not least, the very first one I owned, the very first one I purchased is the Pebble smartwatch. And I revisited this yesterday uh, for a full-time wearable, actually over the past couple of days, but especially for yesterday, the Pebble served me great because a lot of these watches, uh, outside of the Martians, you can see the notification a little bit in sunlight. This works amazing in outdoors, and I was outdoors all morning, afternoon, and some of the night, and just to have the ability to see the screen very easily. By the way, Colm was pretty rough on the Pebble, so <laughs> that's okay. He's he uses these things a lot. I, I baby them. He actually uses them. But uh, we were I was outdoors all day, and you could see every text, every email, every notification very easily, and it was very efficient because half the time I had my smartphone in my pocket or even in my backpack walking around, and I just knew if I got a text to address an issue via text, I went and did it, and it was just very efficient, and I didn't have to go out of the sunlight or, or cover it up on my hand to see uh, in sunlight, and also the fact that the, the you can read a lot more text on the Pebble, even more so than the gear, the Galaxy Gear, or even the Gear Fit, which I like. It's kind of, you know, narrower and kind of broken up. This one, I could read every text, the email, very quickly, very easily, uh, and I'm still a huge fan of it. And right now, it's around 130 to 150. I'm even thinking about getting the Pebble Steel because I like the looks of it. I like the uh, the upgraded screen, so that way it's it's harder to scratch. And I like the metal bands. I want to get the one with both uh, both bands, the metal and the leather band. And for 250 bucks, it's, it might seem like a high price in today's market, but I still think Pebble does a great job. I think the apps are great. I, the Pandora app that I have down here that I just installed worked flawlessly yesterday during the day and, and even the day before when I was testing it. So uh, I don't think you're wrong. I think you should revisit the Pebble. And, you know, I got my Star Trek L cars uh face and now you see a battery percentage and all that stuff a uh, few people have talked about battery uh battery notif or not battery i should say notifications notifications not working with the newest update mine have worked flawlessly they go to the sometimes they feel like they go to the to the watch before they get to my device so which is impossible but you know it's the instantaneous when they go to the watch there's no delay though like there was last year with the uh first pebble 2.0 update that one was uh, not great in the beginning, but right now at 2.4.1 or something like that, it's it's pretty damn good. And I don't think you can go wrong with any of these, depending upon your use case. It depends what you want. I'm very blessed and, and fortunate enough to have an opportunity to deal with most of these watches. But if I had to pick right now for August 2014, it would probably still be a run, a, kind of a tie between the Pebble Smart Watch and the gear fit so that's what i would say and it's a close call because i love the notifier and the victory smart watch but these two watches for price affordability and also for what you're getting with the screens and the notifications and everything i think these two are the way to go the gear fit and the pebble smart watch so hopefully next month for september i'll have the android wear either one and i'll also have uh possibly the Pebble Steel smartwatch, and we'll do a September showdown adding all these and then hopefully the two new ones. So hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions or if you have any comments about the smartwatch or wearable that you think uh, should be the best one out there or how you're using it, anything, video responses, text responses, make sure to like this video, subscribe to us. We are bringing back the live show weekly soon. Stay tuned for that. Uh, we're probably going to have an app so you can get the audio and maybe even the video feed on your smartphone. So for now, for everybody here at the T4 Show, thank you. Best of luck on all your future smartwatch wearable showdown endeavors.